Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Carrie Schatz. I am Principal Product Manager for uh, UXP. And I'm super pumped to have uh, have you here uh, in the workshop. I'm really going really excited to see what what uh, what you're going to learn and what uh, what results from all of this. Um, as always, if you have any questions, um, uh, please feel free to to let us know, and we're happy to work, walk you through issues, um, any problems you might be having. I'm happy to take your feedback. Um, UXP is a maturing ecosystem. Um, so we know that there are things that could use improvement. Um, so we always welcome your feedback um, in that manner as well. So uh, real quickly, um, this one is going to be a little bit different than um, my previous session in uh, partner days. Um, but I still want to cover some of the same stuff, but get a little bit in the, into more depth as to what UXP is, and uh, in particular, why you should actually care about it, um, and um, the kinds of problems that we were, we, we've been trying to solve uh, with UXP. So the biggest thing uh, that um, I, I want to point out um, is that really uh, UXP itself is intended to be an answer to some of the problems that, that we were running into with CEP in particular, um, in that we have, um, I don't know, if, if you have my problem of having, say, 25 or 30 or 40 or 50 browser tabs open at any given time, um, but you know what that does to a computer. Um, it starts slowing things down. It makes it really, really, really painful to use. Um, I've had times where Safari will just lock up on me because, you know, too many instances of, of tabs. So browsers are not these lightweight environments. Uh, um, you can imagine that if inside of um, Photoshop, for example, that you have uh, every type of panel and uh, every every feature that's showing user interface, you can imagine that if ever, if all of this is a browser, that this takes some time and, and system resources uh, away from the user's creativity. Um, and also because we drank our own champagne, uh, um, things like this particular screen, the home screen, were also built using CEP, but that in hampers startup time. Um, a browser does not generally start up instantaneously. And so you can imagine um, that, uh, you know, this has a huge performance impact, especially when you have a lot of uh, tabs open, panels open, and the like, um, this starts to really impact how uh, users perceive the functionality of the product. Um, and so UXP was built as an answer to this. It's UXP is really intended to be this lightweight JavaScript environment that does away with the, the, the issues of slow startup time and lots of browser resource consumption. Um, but with this, that comes a, uh, a lot of trade-offs. Um, so UXP is extremely fast to open, and I always like to uh, use our, our own example with command in, um, our new document experience. Um, now, for some users in the past, perhaps this was not something you ever particularly noticed, um, but for some users, this could take seconds to load. And there's no reason that you know displaying a new document prompt um, to let you put in some resolution settings and pick a preset should ever take, you know, more than a, a couple of milliseconds to load. And so with the change over to UXP, we were able to accomplish a near instantaneous opening uh, of this document or this window. Same thing with opening documents, cloud documents, and the like. So UXP is really built around this need to improve performance um, to ensure that users can build plugins or use plugins and developers can build plugins in a way that doesn't drastically impact the performance of the hosting application. In this case, Photoshop, but the same is true for XD. Um, the other thing that we wanted to really take care of uh, it, with respect to UXP is be aware of the enhanced uh, security and uh, privacy concerns that our users are facing. So you obviously, um, you, you, you are surely aware of the application, uh, iOS App Store, uh, Android Store. Um, there's a lot of places where, um, you know, users are faced now with installing third-party code that they may, you know, may not know or trust. 
And so we want him to make sure that UXP was built from the ground up with this in mind. And so you may, you, you run into um, some cases where, for example, uh, we have security permissions and the like. Um, these are really to ensure that the user can trust that uh, your plugin is doing what it says it's doing. It, it can't go and do things either by accident or maliciously. Um, and users who trust that your plugin uh, is safe uh, are more likely to install and use your plugin. Um, and there's things coming down the pike that will also enable further granular control as well. Um, so really, uh, that's from the technical uh, plugin perspective for, for the developer. For the user, of course, we also have this concept of, uh, of a marketplace and being able to uh, render or, or access these plugins from a shared location. And I'm sure most of you are already familiar with this, um, but we really wanted to make sure that getting, uh, acquiring, installing, using plugins was as easy as possible. And I know we've still got a ways to go in terms of the marketplace, unifying these commerce and all the like. But when it comes to installing UXP plugins, especially compared to the legacy plugins, um, UXP plugins um, have a much, uh, much more, uh, much better install, uh, install rate. Um, it's easier to install them, far less failures. Um, and uh, UXP plugins can be used immediately, whereas um, other plugins would require a restart of the application. Um, so if I install, for example, Pixel Squid, um, I do get this consent message, um, and this is where our granular permissions will be coming in the future. But once it's installed, I'll be able to go straight to Photoshop and start using it. Um, and because I've had Photoshop open, in fact, it's already running for me. So. There's a lot of uh, benefits that UXP brings, not just to the developer, but to the user as well. So let me go into uh, real quick um, what UXP looks like from the developer's perspective. So let me switch over here to um, this slide. When I built it probably <laughs> for a few years back, I never realized how, how much this slide would, would, would continue to be reused. Um, but it's a good indication, a good um, um, uh, analog to what's actually going on in the system. So when you think about UXP, um, it's important, number one, to think about UXP that it's not a browser. Um, and you'll hear this refrain many times in the forums as to why does this feature not work? Why is this not supported? Why can't I use this module? Well, it's because UXP is not a browser. Um, it looks an awful lot like a browser because there are some APIs that are similar. But UXP itself is a JavaScript environment. And UXP provides this framework for rendering your plugins user interface, for accessing files, for going to the network and the like. UXP is providing this common uh, framework that you can build a plugin and you know, reuse this in Photoshop and NXD and in future applications when UX come, UXP comes on board. But the biggest difference here, of course, is because we're not a browser, there's a lot of things that UXP doesn't support. So I like to think, um, and if it helps you think this, um, I, I like to think of UXP's at best analog um, in the open source world as React Native or Native Script or any of the, the, the applications out there that are giving you a React-like declarative UI framework with some JavaScript and browser APIs, but they are not full browsers. And they have, they're have they doing this for the same reasons. As you, you can have better performance, you can have faster startup time, better memory management and the like if you are not a browser. Um, granted, you sacrifice some other things with that. But here um, in, this, in this slide, um, I wanted to point out, um, here's what the context generally looks like. So, when we're dealing with UXP, we actually have uh, two environments. We have the host environment. This can be Photoshop, this can be XD. Um, for for you know, any of our applications, uh, when UXP gets there, Illustrator, InDesign, et cetera. So whenever I say the word host, uh, this is what that's referring to is the host application. So if I switch over to Photoshop, for example, this is everything that's around my plugin. So in the case of Pixel Squid, Everything around here, except what's rendering in here, is um, is the host, okay? And the host provides a whole um, uh, entire suite of uh, user and developer features. So the user feature, and one of the biggest user features in Photoshop, of course, 
um, is this very rich ability to manage my workspace. I can drag and drop panels. Um, I can have multiple panels open at once. Um, and this does vary by host. So XD has a much more limited suite of uh, where your plugin can live. It can live in the left hand uh, sidebar and that's about it, but it can be, a, it can at least be resized. Um, so there are differences in terms of how the host uh, shows your plugin um, and, and how the user can interact with it. Um, so the host application provides a lot of these uh, is essentially if you if you if you want to go with a browser analogy, the uh, host application um, can it, you can think of it as the Chrome around your plugin. Um, so the Chrome around a browser and everything that it's providing, the host application is that. The host application also provides an, an entire suite of of APIs. Um, so uh, a lot of times our shorthand is UXP is, uh, you know, you're building a UXP plugin and you're, you're, you're communicating with Photoshop or whatnot. A lot of times you might just say, well, I'm having an issue building my UXP plugin. Well, the host application provides a significant amount of the API surface that you can interact with. This is where the magic is. Um, Photoshop and XD do things uh, very differently. They are different kind of applications. In the forward, the same is true of, you know, imagine working with a video application. Video and, you know, single images uh, do things very differently. And so that API surface is provided by the host application. Um, and there are going to be differences here. There's going to be various limitations. Um, quirks, idioms that, you know, that it makes sense in the context of Photoshop and users expect Photoshop to work a certain way, um, but they may not always apply to XD, for example. Um, so it's important to recognize when you're using a common API inside of UXP and when you're using a host API. And usually you can tell these when you're having to use require uh, Photoshop or requiring a module out of XD. It's usually pretty obvious when you're, when you're making that transition. The other uh, side of the house is what UXP is providing. And so UXP provides this uh, rich layer that gives you the ability to render your user interface if you want one. You do not have to have one, by the way. But if you want one, it gives you the ability to render your, your user interface using a subset of HTML and CSS. And I say subset, um, you know, put that in bold italic letters. We are not a browser. And so we do not support the whole suite of functionality here. Um, for example, we don't support grid layout. Um, right now your options are flex uh, layout if you're trying to uh, render content in your user interface. Or um, as of 5.2, if you're, if you're in any of the pre-releases, you can start using table layout. Um, but it does give you enough power uh, to create some really rich, compelling uh, experiences. Same thing goes for CSS, is we give you a way to style the controls and the divs and spans that you can create, but it's not the full suite of CSS. We also provide, uh, for those uh, who need to get some user interface, uh, interactive user interface on the screen, is this idea of Spectrum UXP. And Spectrum UXP is really intended to give you the ability to quickly render user interfaces that follow the Spectrum design language without having to do a lot of work. So there's a lot of things you get for free with Spectrum UXP. You get a, a consistent look and feel. You get the ability with 5.2 to resize these controls up and down. Uh, you get um, more flexibility than if you're using the host native controls because uh, a button in Photoshop or XD may only know how to render text and maybe if you're, uh, you know, maybe a single icon. A uh, Spectrum UXP button is leveraging the power of UXP's layout engine internally and can give you this ability to render um, a, a much richer experience inside of that button. We also provide the JavaScript engine. This is a V8 library for, for all intents and purposes is in, in XD and in Photoshop. I believe the current version is 8.9. Um, and so you get a lot of the stuff that comes along with uh, the, the modern JavaScript features. So you can build classes, you have promises, you have await um, and async uh, features, generators if you want them. And there's a, you don't even have to worry about polyfilling a lot of those things, right? Because that version of V8 comes with those features already uh, going and at native performance. 
Um, and then we provide a whole host of common APIs. Like I mentioned, we have networking file, the HTML5 DOM, and there's other things that we're working on adding, such as some, some common imaging uh, routines to make it easy for you to get a, pixels out of Photoshop and show them in your own UI or send them over the disk uh, to the disk or send them over the wire. Um, and then, you know, there's also stuff that we're working on around machine learning. And um, you've, you may have heard in the previous uh, two days, things about Sensei and the like is, you know, how do we enable these kinds of cool functionalities to be utilized uh, by the developer community? So there's a whole host of things that go into your plugin and um, into the context around it. For the purposes of today in general, you know, you have your plugin and you can use React if you want to build a complex UI or you can use vanilla JavaScript. Um, but this is where your plugin lives and then it's communicating across all of these other surfaces. So really quickly, um, I, I hope hopefully that helps helps lay the framework and the foundation. Um, and I want to really quickly hone in on one aspect um, since we want to talk a little bit about Spectrum UXP and, this, and the design language and how that can impact you. So let me switch back over to Photoshop and I'm going to load a um, plugin that I have. If you have not, by the way, already installed the UXP developer tool, I would encourage you to do so. It's incredibly useful for getting your plugins uh, running. Um, but what I have here is a kitchen sink application. Um, and this in here shows uh, all of the, uh, the spectrum components that we support in UXP. Um, and I will be pasting a link to the kitchen sink in the chat here shortly. Um, but these are all spectrum components. And you can see that, yes, they are not um, uh, necessarily Photoshop native components, but they do match our look and feel for, for Adobe um, designed uh, features. For example, if I go back to this home screen, you can see that um, already there's, there's a lot of spectrum uh, design language inside of Photoshop. There's a lot of uh, XD is even more so spectrum look and feel. Um, so uh, users should not have a problem in terms of using uh, a Spectrum UI in your plugins. Um, but uh, when it comes to the Spectrum UI, um, this gives you a lot of functionality uh, for free that you don't have to worry about. Um, and um, these are just easy ways to drop in something and, and get something that looks like it's been uh, designed. Um, the other aspect here is in 5.2 and UXP 5.2 in the pre-release is we've now added the ability to create smaller and larger variations. This is very important for users, uh, for developers who needed to have a little bit tighter information density. And so this is now possible if you're in the pre-release. If you don't have the pre-release, that's okay. You can still use Spectrum components. Um, they will just be a little bit larger. Um, but I would definitely encourage you to get the pre-release and play with it. Um, the reason that we are doing Spectrum UXP uh, is that in the long run, we want to have a modern rendering backend. Um, and if you do any work whatsoever with UXP um, and follow some web patterns and start overlaying content, you may start finding that you cannot put, um, for example, spans or tooltips or anything like that over a, a, a top text fields. And this is one of, a symptom of one of many issues in terms of that the Z order and uh, appearance and translucency, um, these controls were never you know, built in a way that, that they thought they would be in a web-like environment uh, with web-like patterns. And so the spectrum components are built in such a way that when we make this transition, they come along for free. And so I would highly encourage you to start using them where you can. Um, the SP button works in very many ways, the same as you would expect a regular button to work. Uh, SP text field, similarly. Um, but where there are cases or limitations, please let us know because uh, we wanna make sure that these are fully featured for you to be able to switch over if you're just using the native components. And if you're stuck on one of those, um, because we don't have that functionality here, we, we do desperately need to know that. Um, now with Spectrum, um, there's also a really excellent website that I, that I would like to point you to um, real quick. Um, and that is uh, the Spectrum design language uh, that Adobe has put out here. I would encourage you to read this because even if you're not going to use Spectrum, um, 
it gives you a good sense of what goes into a design language um, and you know building consistent user interfaces for your plugin. Um, the user experience, um, the UI that your plugin has is the first thing that your user sees. It's going to be incredibly important to make a good first impression. So even if you're not using Spectrum, I would encourage you to look at the design resources that we have out there and maybe apply some of those patterns. Now, are you required to use Spectrum in your plugins? Um, no. If you want to create a custom control built out of divs, spans, SVGs, whatever, and in some cases, maybe you have a very uh, uh, bespoke um, slider or histogram or something like that that you, that you need perfect control over, please you know, feel free to do that. You are not required to have a plugin that looks and feels like Spectrum. Um, this is a easy path to getting something that looks and feels, you know, r relatively designed, um, especially when you're working on simpler plugins that, you know, maybe you just need a couple of properties uh, to put in a panel. You know, this is, uh, this is there, ready to go. No installation required. It comes for free. Um, awesome. So what I would like to do before I hand it back over, because um, I believe I'm at time, um, I want to hand it back, uh, give you a couple of links for documentation purposes, and I'm sure this will be covered further throughout the, uh, the, the program. But um, if you're building for UXP uh, on Photoshop, please, 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 uh, you know, read up on the Photoshop documentation. I will copy and paste this link into the slides. But there's a lot of information here. Um, and I do apologize that the search functionality is does not work well. Um, so what I would point you to instead is go to either this Photoshop API tag, and this is has all of the features um, that Barkin has provided. And in fact, there is actually a stage version of this if you're in the pre-release. Um, let's see if this will actually work. Oh, no, nah, shoot. Um, We'll, we'll, we'll get that straightened out. We'll have Barkin share the link, but there's a staged version of that for API level two, which is the next level of DOM APIs from Photoshop. We have a similar website for XD. Um, you can go there um, and uh, it has information on developing for XD. And then in both of these, we have a UXP section. And this UXP section, uh, you can drill down in here. There's Here's what we support CSS, HTML. Here's our Spectrum UXP reference if you're unsure of a control that you can use and how to use it. Um, and uh, here is uh, a lot of the JavaScript modules that we have present. And I do apologize if you have a question and you can't find it in the documentation, please ask um, because the search unfortunately is not um, wired up in a way that makes sense right now, which means you won't find it just by searching over here. Um, if a Google search might be easier, but if you're unsure of something, please let us know um, and ask. Um, so with that, um, I would encourage you to make sure that you have the UXP developer tool downloaded. It is available in the Creative Cloud desktop application. Make sure that you have the latest version of Photoshop or XD. Um, or if you're in the pre-release, um, have those pre-release versions uh, going. Um, everything that, that you're, you will be dealing with today um, is applicable there as well. So I'm going to turn it back over to um, Ingo, and um, I hope this was helpful in, in a small way to understand uh, UXP.